Bartomeu White Chick. And I'm Dee Gardner Black Chick. <laughs> We're here on our second video with our D.A.R.E. series, Dialogue Authentically About Real Racial Experiences mm -hmm. for the purpose of building bridges. And mm -hmm. today is a very special day to me, um, and I imagine to Dee, mm -hmm. it is the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. We're filming here in Houston, April 4th, 2018, and we just take a moment to honor his legacy and thank him for giving his life for the purpose of raising awareness and challenging all of us to think about judging people by who they are, mm -hmm. not what they look like. So we, we thank you, Dr. King, and I think maybe we're here as a result of the work that he did. What do you think? Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to certainly expand it, yeah. mm -hmm. his legacy. So our intention is to build bridges in our dialogue. And in our first video, we talked about microaggressions. Mm -hmm. And during that video, Dee mentioned something called code switching. And so Dee is going to tell us a little bit about what code switching means, why it's important for people of color to code switch, and we're going to have a dialogue about it. So what is code switching? Well, well I want to back up. I just want to give the, a little bit more about the definition of microaggression. Okay. So microaggression are those small, and sometimes big, but they're these small daily behaviors. It could be verbally or non-verbally. It could be a tone, word, spoken, gestures, body language uh, that's communicating some sort of bias. And the person may intentionally or unintentionally be projecting this. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be intentionally. The person may be completely unaware, and usually that is the case, right. that they're committing a microaggression. Yeah. And, and, we're in, and we're focusing on racial microaggressions. Right. So microaggressions can occur with gender, with mm -hmm. sexual preference, right. ageism, mm -hmm. all of those things. Exactly. But our focus is racism. And I, mm -hmm. you said these small things. Mm -hmm. So they may be small, they may be unintentional, mm -hmm. they may be by very aware people and mm -hmm. evolved people. I mm -hmm. like to think of myself as a, an evolved person and Dee has actually shared with me um, ways in which even in our dialogue that I have committed some microaggressions. Mm -hmm. So they might be small, subtle things, mm -hmm. but they have a powerful impact. Yes. Their impact is not small. Mm -hmm. So, and I think the important thing that you said is you know, I certainly don't want to awarely mm -hmm. ha commit a microaggression, mm -hmm. so generally it's unaware, mm -hmm. and that doesn't lessen its impact or lessen the responsibility for me or for someone to expand what they're doing or how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. If they truly want to be mm -hmm. a person who builds bridges and deals with their own racism, I don't think we can deal with the racism in the world if we don't deal with our own yes. Uh, biases, mm -hmm. as you said. So, thank you for mm -hmm. clarifying. No problem. All right. Okay, so you asked about code switching. Code switching. Tell us about that. So, code switching, there are two different definitions. One definition is where a person speaks one language and mid-sentence they may use another language. A person okay. may speak Spanish and they use English words and Spanish words even in the same sentence. Okay. So, that's one way a person might code switch. Okay. Another definition for code switching is to speak one way with family and friends or all people of your same culture or ethnicity in a different way in another group. So the code switching that we're referring to is I might speak one way with family and friends and I might speak a different way with whites. As a matter of fact, most of the time African Americans are speaking one way with family it's whites, it's not necessarily just professionals, it's whites mm -hmm. that where we code switch and we speak differently. Okay, so in the first example, mm -hmm. it's just someone who's bilingual mm -hmm. might move in and out of their native language mm -hmm. and their learned language. Mm -hmm. 
in the second example of code switching that you referred to with African American people mm -hmm. um, in terms of their communication with Caucasian people, white people, it has to do with what? What is going on there? Well, when we're code switching, we're trying to fit in. It's kind of a way of survival. If I speak one way at home, I have to speak the language of the people that I'm interacting with. If I'm speaking, and I, so if I'm interacting with blacks at home and they speak a certain way, we'll call it, um, we call it African American vernacular English, which is Ebonics. For sh Ebonics. Um, if, You've if, brought that up before. We've talked about that off of the video. Ebony phonics yeah. is where it came from. Yeah. So, uh, so at home, everybody's speaking Ebonics, and then at work, everybody's speaking what we call standard English. And so I've got to know how to speak both. And we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that at some point. Okay. So. Thank you. Okay. Thank You're you welcome. for sharing your experience, strength, and hope. You're um, thanks for being here. All righty. We conclude video number two. two. It's Sally Bartomeu, white chick. Dee Gartner, black chick. We want to remind you to like subscribe, and check out the practices that we have. And be sure to comment below. We want your real, authentic feedback. As long as it's respectful. Disagree all you like.